Good evening everybody and welcome to another student talk session tonight. Tonight we are going to have our seventh session with different students from different universities. They are really great students and uh, when they come we are going to start our live sessions with them. But before that one I would like to introduce them. The first uh, guest is Gökçen Bahadır from Gazi University. And the second case is uh, Ezgi Uysal from Hacettepe University. I think they are here, so let me invite them, then we can start our live session. Gökçen, and now I'm going to invite my second guest is Gi. I think Gökçen is here. Hello Gökçen. Yes, hi. Good evening everyone. <laughs> I'm just trying to invite the other guest. Okay. Hmm. Let me invite her again. Why she cannot join it? Just let me invite her again. Okay. Ezgi, are you here? Maybe you can try to join. Um, I try to invite her, but... Actually, she is not here right now. She's not watching. She's not watching. Mm. Yeah, maybe that's why. Let me let me she let me write. Know. Okay, just a moment. Okay. Just a moment. Hi, Sete <laughs> Yeah, she's here. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Sete When I see her, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, Alperoja is also here. Hello, Alperoja. Yeah. Yes, there she is. There you go. This time, I think I can invite her. Yes, I have invited her now. There Hello. she is. Hello, Ezgi. Okay, so Gökçen and Ezgi, you're all, all you're here. It's great. Okay, it's wonderful to see here both of you. Before starting our live sessions, I would like to say thank you for accepting my invitation for student thank talks. You. This is really important project for me and for most of the audiences that will listen us here. So that's all. <laughs> Thank okay. You. We, okay. I'm really happy to see you both of you. All right. So let's move to the session then, because uh, okay. we are all excited, and I'm sure that you are excited too, just like me. But is he... ah, Okay. All right. Now. Okay. Let's start. And this question, okay, for both of you, like, can you tell us about yourself, please, and a bit about your. Uh, how can I say, experience in language learning. Let's start with you, Gökçen. Okay, let's start. Uh, do you want me to introduce myself? Sure, you can. You sure. Okay. So, for everyone, hi. <laughs> uh, good evening. And uh, I'm Gökçen from uh, Ankara, from Gazi University. Uh, I'm studying at English language teaching uh, in there. And... This will be the last year for my um, study. So I'm also um, sad, but also happy. <laughs> um, also, uh, uh, how can I say? Maybe I can uh, mention my um, hobbies, um, general hobbies. I also, uh, in, I'm also interested in I skating in Ankara. I really, nice. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I really um, make 
effort for this. Uh, if you want, you can just uh, send a message. Uh, also, I can say that about my uh, experiences in, uh, in language learning. Um, my language learning experience started in 2013. Actually, I went to Finland uh, wow. with, mm -hmm. yeah, with a Comenius project from Erasmus for uh, the elementary schools. And um, I went there for uh, a week, but I realized that the uh, language is the key of communication. So mm -hmm. uh, I thought that I should learn the language I should speak uh, the foreign language so I can connect with other people from other countries, from other cultures. Um, in high school time, um, I was good at maths and sciences, but I was really interested in foreign language actually. And I always uh, listen to songs in foreign languages and mm -hmm. try to translate them in my own way. And in my spare time, I watched lots of series with English subtitles and tried to understand the main idea, not the details, but the main idea. And yeah, my language skills has been improving still. <laughs> That's all, thank <laughs> Great. you. Great, okay, thank you very much. What about you, Esgi? Um, uh, I'm Esgi, I'm studying Translation and interpretation in Hacettepe, and mm -hmm. I never get the chance to ice skate or go to a foreign country. <laughs> but go. I also watch a lot of TV series, and it piqued my curiosity. So I start uh -huh. learning English. Okay, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much, Edgi. All right, so let's move to the next question then. What was or were your turning point or points in your own education? Let's start with you, Ezgi, this time. Ezgi, did you hear oh, me? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Um, in high school time, they made us choose between three courses and the other two had mathematics in it. And I hated mathematics and <laughs> I already was watching TV series and I think, yeah, I can catch some English words. I understand some subcontext and I hate math. So I choose English. And in that point, I noticed um, I have a little bit of talent about that. Uh -huh. So, yeah, my journey start there <laughs> with oh, my hatred for math. <laughs> I think the most of the English teachers, I think I got a problem with maths. Yeah, I think that one of them is me. <laughs> All right. Yes. What about you, Gokchen? Uh, as I said before, I was good at maths and physics and science, <laughs> let's say. Uh, I also really interested in math and sciences. But uh, in high school, um, my physics teacher, we had some troubles um, about exams and the marks, low marks. Uh, and we had an argue about them. And I decided to uh, not to um, choose the math section or uh -huh. being a doctor or being a dentist like that uh, and I decided to study at English any department of English and mm -hmm. my journey has been started <laughs> uh -huh. I see that's kind of, that I think kind of a turning point that uh, <laughs> for both of you thank you very much for both of you all right so let's move to another question so what are your expectations from 2020 actually we have already you know the the i think like we are middle. in yeah the middle of the year but for the rest of the year what are your expect about it let's start with you Esgi. so the first half of the year was very stressful for me uh, moving out living in another city trying to manage um adult things was mm -hmm. hard so for the rest of the year uh 
little bit of balance and comes would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. What about you, Gökçe? Uh, actually, there are not my expectations. There are my goals. Getting oh, okay. high marks from the exams, like foreign language exams or ILS or KPSS. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> so oh. I just expect from um, 2022. I see. We wish you luck then. <laughs> Actually, you need Thank it. You. All right. Let's move to the next question, which is related with the language education. This question is for both of you. Do you feel that you have learned how to read and listen in terms of language skills? Yes. Let's start with you, Gökçen. Um. Actually, yes. From high school, it started. As I said before, I mm -hmm. listen to for uh, foreign language musics and um, I watched series in foreign language in English subtitles mm -hmm. so um, in especially in prep class we just practice speaking and language skills because um, that's the key point of learning a foreign language I think so um, actually I really practice in prep class uh, about listening as I said before um, for the, listening for the main idea and listening for details I learned that in my um, actually in this year and the last year we have learned no in the first year yeah in mm -hmm. the first year we have learned four basic skills we uh, had four lessons like writing speaking uh, listening and reading and we have learned scanning and scheming like that and that was the um, good experience for me about learning a language I experienced myself uh, how can I learn a foreign language so mm -hmm. I used these terms for let's say read and listening I see thank you very much Gökçen what about you Ezgi um, I was always a big reader so Getting a chance to read a book in their official language was always a very interesting thing for me. So I really looked up for that and I managed to do that in uh -huh. the end. I can read and listen as good as I read and listen in Turkish. And I don't know how much school contributes to it because I was <laughs> already listening to English music and TV series and trying to read um, English texts. Uh -huh. Yeah, but yeah, I managed. <laughs> you managed. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your answers to both of you. Yes, Gökçen, this question is for you. Do you think yeah. you have learned how to learn? Like, for example, after all those years with English lessons, can you start learning another foreign language on your own? Actually, yes. Uh, as I said nice. before <laughs> again, <laughs> as I said before again, um, I really um, had good experiences about learning a new language. I mm -hmm. always um, try to being a part of learning and uh, learning English actually, not a new language, learning e uh, English. And I always try to new learning styles maybe. And actually I started to um, learn Spanish. <laughs> And I nice. use some apps, and as I did before, um, I always try to listen Spanish music and catch the keywords, maybe catch the common words in English, uh -huh. maybe. And and I always compare the languages, foreign languages, That's not Turkish, <laughs> not translating <laughs> uh, this time. Uh, yeah, so I really appreciate that. I learned how to uh -huh. learn a language. Okay, wonderful. Lingo. Wonderful. I hope you learn it as soon as possible. Yeah. That's Spanish. Okay, thank you very much, Gökçen. Ne next welcome. question is for both of you. Like, could you find enough opportunities to practice speaking in the class and outside the classroom? Let's start with you, Esgi. Um, In the classroom, actually, no. no. Um, well, in okay. this term, I had a lesson. And it was a golden opportunity for practicing, practicing speaking because mm -hmm. we made presentations about current and very popular topics. And in the 
end of every presentation, we sit and talk about it, but we never talk in English. Um, but we did the presentations in English, so That's I don't understand why we didn't continue uh -huh. talking English. But outside of the classroom, internet is a very wide and accepting place nowadays. So uh -huh. if you are willing to go and search, you can always find a community um, that is ha that has some uh, common values and interests as you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you are willing, you can go and find. I found my people in the internet and get the chance to talk to them in English. So yes. I see. Yes. I think you can find more opportunities outside the classrooms rather than inside the classroom, you mean. Okay, thank you very much. What about you, Gökçen? What is your idea about it? Yeah, my department is English language teaching. So we have to learn for basic skills to teach the ch to children or to people. Mm -hmm. So um, in classroom, uh, in prep class, uh, we had lots of speaking activities, warm-up activities, like that and especially in this year uh, we made lots of presentations demo lessons so oh, I, I really mm -hmm. find enough opportunities to practice speaking in class mm -hmm. and outside mm -hmm. uh, the classroom um, I'm working at multicultural sports school right now and there are Excellent. lots of children uh, I can say 72 children and they most of them are from embassy uh they are the ch children from them uh wow so <laughs> I, I really yeah i really practice speaking outside the classroom as well you can give the name of the place where you work yeah, it's not a problem that's the name multicultural sports school Huh, that's the name of the place you were yeah. multicultural sports school. Ah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's in, I think it's in Ankara. Yeah, yeah. It's in oh, Ankara I... and you can find it maybe. Is it advertisement or not? I'm not I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> M-U-S-S. I see. Okay, like thank you. Would you like to add anything else or that's all? No, that's all. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Yes, Esgi, next question is, uh, <coughs> is for you. If you could have, what would you have skipped or added in your English lessons? Um, I you... couldn't catch the question okay. because so of let my me ask... connection. All right, let me ask you again. If you could have, what would you have uh, skipped or added in your English lessons? Okay. Uh, one of my lessons was about listening, and mm -hmm. in that lesson, in that lesson's exam, our teacher took us to the translation laboratory, and we sit in the this interpretation booth, and we made a we. Mm, the exam was happening there, and it was very interesting because it felt more legit, and it felt like. If I graduate from this uh, school and if I get the job, I would be doing this and I want to um, experiment more with these um, real life things, not I like see. sitting in a classroom and translating things. I can already do that in my own with a computer, but that boot was another experience and uh -huh. I'm still very, very happy about it. So... Yeah, this type of things would be awesome. <laughs> I see. All right. You want to change that kind of thing. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Esgi. So let's move to another question. This question is again for both of you. What makes a teacher the best and the worst for you? It's a very critical question. So <laughs> yes, let's start yeah. with you, Gökçen. Yeah. <laughs> My physics teacher was too uh, author authoritarian. Yeah, I, I can I even say that I really I hate see. this word, and I think the worst teacher uh -huh. is that. Yeah, um, that uh, has these kind of characteristics. But for the best teacher, I can say he or she should be open-minded and up to date. 
especially in uh, foreign language classrooms. I see. Okay, thank you very much. What about you, Ezgi? What is your idea about it? How should be? <laughs> for, <laughs> for the worst teacher, I had a teacher this year and she didn't even bother to trying to learn my name. She oh called me yeah. uh, someone else's <laughs> friend. And when I asked her to please stop doing that, we can try, you can try to learn my name. She mocked me for being a feminist. Oh, uh -huh. and yeah, uh, time to time she would pick a student and tell them things like, you shouldn't come here next week. You are bothering us. You are wasting our time. You are not worth it. You couldn't do this language. You, you are not learning. And in her terms, every week she would choose a victim and yeah, okay. she would uh -huh. ask them more and harder questions. And I feel like a student never be a victim in a classroom. Uh -huh. They should feel safe to learn things. Mm -hmm. So she was the worst. And for the best, <laughs> I have a teacher and she is following this account actually. Uh -huh. uh, her name is Gunnar Logan and if she, is, if she listens this, she was the best. She always sit there and talk with us. We go to lunches together. We went to breakfasts. We watched movies together and she always listened to us. Mm -hmm. Not only she knew me, she knew my family. I really felt she cared about us. And when I compared this to, you know, they are both teachers, but you can see the difference in the quality. <laughs> so the care is the most important <laughs> I see. thing for me. Okay, I see. Okay, let me tell you another about something that you mentioned, the Gönül Algen. So she's a good teacher and I know her and her daughter was my student. Yeah, so that's, that's really great. Yeah, <laughs> And she was, I think she is here or she was there. I saw her, Buket. Buket also was here, her daughter. Okay, so... Tell your good. mother I'm saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can say no problem. You can send a hi. You can send the hi, not a problem. All right, thank you very much to both of you for your answers. Honest answers. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Okay, so Gökçen, next question is for you. Do you think that you had known what you were expected to achieve at the end of the academic year when you first started your prep year? Is it important to know and why? Um, I will start the second question. Uh, okay. It's important to know because, you know, it becomes the um, goals not mm -hmm. uh, um, expectations it will become a goal so you can act uh, in this way um, for the first question for my goals it goes on as i expected because i um, really want the academic career <laughs> and i see i hope um, but for expectations for being a teacher i had thought that i wouldn't be a teacher uh, for elementary school or in a high school but with the young lang um, young learners lesson yeah and teaching foreign language to young learners lesson and teaching um, language skills lesson these two uh, lessons taught me that I can do that. So I really, uh, I didn't expect that I can do it, but I believe in myself with these two lessons and I thank the, um, my teachers, uh, Gonja Yangun Ikshi and Pasha Tefik Jepe. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Okay, great, great, just Jen. Say hi to your teachers from here. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so let's move to, thank you very much. Let's move to another question. This, this question is again for both of you. What materials or activities keeps you most engaged in English classes and why? Let's start with you, Ezgi. So I did a lot of translations this year. So I will talk about that a little bit because it's my major. Sure. And... um. We translated some science magazine uh, texts and I translated them and it was fun. But when we get to do actual books, it was fantastic because 
Mm-hmm. Um, I like reading books and I like fiction. So when I get a chance to translate fiction, I have the most fun. So maybe if we can uh, make these things a little bit more um, personalized, it, it would be better because uh-huh. I would get the most fun there. <laughs> I see. All right. Thank you. Would you like to add anything else or that's all? That's all. Okay. So what about you, Gökçen? What materials or yes. activities keep you most engaged? Uh, I started to um, do some lesson plans in this year. So we always try to find some warm-up activi- activities. Uh-huh. And um, most, of, most of them were for um, young learners, let's say, uh, until um, the teenagers, not the adults. So we always try to uh, funny uh, activities. And uh, with that, um, especially the warm activities, I always pay attention to class, English classes. So even I um, be, Even I um, become curious about the topic, let's say, with the Uh warm activity. Um, In addition to this, uh, speaking activities uh, are so fun for me because I really hate writing and reading. We don't have any (laughs) common points uh, with (laughs) Ezgi. But um, in the first and second year of university, we always... Uh, re- we always read um, some articles or essays and we wrote lots of essays so uh, I'm tired of this <laughs> I really like <laughs> I really like speaking activities so my favorite activities are warm-up and speaking activities for the materials I really love digital materials basically digital materials because you know we are in the the world digital with age a, yeah. exactly digital era yeah. you are right okay yeah. thank you very much for the uh, for your answer okay you. let's move to the next question this question is for you Ezgi. can you describe a good example of a learning environment in terms of english classes sure i had a wonderful teacher uh, in my university too And he was so cultured about so many things. Um, he give, gave us some homeworks and he always knew um, a little de- details about the mm-hmm. texts he gave us. And he could talk about them for hours with us. And I really, really liked them. Nice. Because um, if you are given a homework, you should know about it, that homework too. It's not exactly. just translation, it's the culture behind mm-hmm. every English text. So if you don't know the culture, you can't um, expect us to uh, wait for us to know and make the work right. And he knew all of it, and he always told us a little details that we missed. So it I was see. a great learning environment. I see. Okay, thank you very much. It's it's who, who was the teacher? You said who was the teacher? You said I had a teacher. Jihan ah, Alan. Uh, he okay. was yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank he, you. He was much. a great teacher. Okay, I just wanted to learn his name. That's why I asked <laughs> again. Okay. Let's move to another questions. That that's all. Thank you very much for your answers about it. Can you tell us this five Phrasal verbs that you always use in or outside the classes. Let's start with you, Gökçen. Uh, in nice. classes, actually, I, <laughs> you know, we are a preserves teacher, so um, I always use the phrasal verb handout. Handout. Okay, handout. Is <laughs> like yes. Yeah, And handout. Maybe one. in speaking activities. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Okay. Phrasal verbs. Uh, uh, outside the classes, um, especially in sports, as I said before, uh-huh. I'm interested in yeah. um, ice skating. So um, I'm trainer at ice skating rink for the children who are um, trying to learn ice skating, how to ice skate. 
I always say, uh -huh, watch out. Watch the out. Phrase over. Yeah, watch out. Yeah. And Two more. when when they are about to give up uh, or decide not to do that or start to cry, I always say, give, uh, don't give up or give up. go uh -huh. on. Go oh, I on. See. Two more. You said yeah. give up. Then go on. All right. Wonderful. Don't give Thank up. You <laughs> Don't give up. Nice. Nice phrase. Well. Thank you. What about you as gift? Outside of the classroom, <clears throat> doze off because I am a very sleepy person. <laughs> and monkey around. I really like that phrase because it sounds fun. Lighten up. Uh, in Ankara, the mood is very gloomy. So I see. All of the... <laughs> All of us needs a little bit light, and in classroom, focus on. I see. Good. And, and more. also carry on because the conversation will just go on and on right. and on. Go on so, and on. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Thank you very much for these useful phrasal verbs. All right, from for both of you. Okay, so let's move to another question. This is really interesting, and I wonder what are you going to say about it. If you could have one superpower to use in the classroom. What would it be and how would it help? Let's start with you, Esgi. Superior memory for me. I have <laughs> really bad memory and That's learning okay. vocabulary was always a very hard thing for me. I always forgot after it five solid minutes. I don't remember any new words that I learned. So superior memory would be awesome for me. <laughs> awesome I need for you. It. Okay, good. Okay, what about you, Gökçen? Actually, that's the same as it. <laughs> mm. I really, yeah, want to memorize the whole book, let's say, that wow. I read once. I I really wanted that. <laughs> that's that's wonderful point that you mentioned. Yeah. Again, you all need a kind of a memory that you need to read yeah. and memorize it and never forget. Okay, yes. wonderful. Okay, good. Yes, let's move to the another question. What was the biggest challenge that you have faced this year so far? Gökçen. For uh, the school or general? It's your choice. You can tell both of them Actually, if you want. <laughs> both of them. For, the bo for both of them, my biggest challenge was literature class. Mm -hmm. I hate <laughs> literature. I cannot comment on the, let's say, plays or the other things so i don't have the talent for literature so the biggest uh -huh. challenge was a literature class for me this for year you, in the I semester see. especially okay thank you what about you as gay so i am from Man Mainsa actually and <laughs> Mainsa is so hot and <laughs> i always been here until last year And then I moved to Ankara with a one letter jacket <laughs> because it was enough for me in the Manisa. And when I went to Ankara with one letter jacket, the cold was my worst enemy. <laughs> I suffered. <laughs> uh, I shivered through my lessons. I uh -huh. hated going outside because it was always cold and I never got warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it was my biggest um, <laughs> challenge. You huh, that you <laughs> if I, I think you should have asked someone before going to Ankara. Especially uh, Ankara. <laughs> yeah, especially Ankara. All right. Thank you very much for sharing your challenges with us. Okay, let's move to the next question. So can you tell us five adjectives that describe an effective... I said, I, I, I'd say language teachers, or sorry, language learners, let's say. Five adjectives about the effective language learners. Let's start with you, Ezgi. First of all, they need to be passionate about the language because okay. it needs a lot of motivation. Mm -hmm. Passionate, motivated, okay, too. and stubborn because okay, you can't three. just uh -huh. give up. And uh, you need to be chill about it because <laughs> okay, you can't four. give up, give up in, A little mistake you need to go through. You need to be calm about it. Uh -huh. And the last and, one. Yeah, you need to be organized. All right. Because Good. it takes a lot of practice to learn a language. Good. 
Thank you. What about you, Gökçen? <laughs> what are your adjectives? My, my first adjective, adjective is being brave because um, the an effective language learner um, decide that she or he will um, get out of the comfort zone. So he, he should have the courage for this. Uh -huh. So my first adjective is being brave. brave. And second okay. is up to date. As we said before, mm -hmm. we are in the digital age. So you should keep up all the things, the all uh -huh. um, up to date things, let's say. Okay. And the third one right. is talkative. And I can yes. say the word is easy to get along with because okay. uh, mm -hmm. you cannot learn a new language without listening and speaking. You have to talk, yeah. even if you don't want to, you have to talk. So uh, the uh, effective language learning should be talkative and okay. uh, Next one. easy to get along with. And the last one is curious. Because okay. even in your uh, mother language, you have to um, learn something new. You have to mm -hmm. be curious about learning something new, not about learning a new language, oh, new I things. See. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good job for both of you. <laughs> nice adjectives. All right. Two questions left. Yes, only two questions left. Yeah, time flies. All right, <laughs> let's move to the next question. This is also a really interesting one. Think that we finish the interview and you step outside the home or office or school, wherever you do. Find a lottery ticket and that ends up winning $10 million. What would you do? Let's start with you, Gökçen. I hate wasting my money in general. So... <laughs> so uh, yes, before is. going uh, a vacation, a whole day, uh, I prefer to um, open a multi-language school with very experienced stuff. So I can uh, do my job and that's my passionate. So um, that's why I um, want to open a multilingual school, let's say multilingual, uh -huh. not multilingual. Yeah. I see. All right. That's <laughs> it. Thank you very much. Nice, okay. nice. Okay, you use the money for a good purpose. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Esgi? I think I will be talking with uh, most of the people have the same idea with me. I will buy a one-way ticket to England <laughs> and I will pay whatever it takes to find myself a job and a house and a good living condition in there and stay there. <laughs> I'm okay to be in, you know, a cashier <laughs> or I don't know. Um, I, I like cafes. I can be a <laughs> server, but yeah, I want to go abroad and okay. possibly stay there for a while. I see. Okay. And probably you can do that with $10 million. Definitely. And you can spend it as much as you can. Okay. Thank you very much to both of you for your nice ideas about winning $10 million. You have great ideas about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move to the last question. Yes, what is your motto, Ezgi? Again, I okay. didn't catch the question. Okay, so what is your motto? Oh, okay. My mother always says, do your best and go to bed with clear consciousness uh -huh. so it's my motto all right thank you very much what about you Gökçen? uh i read a quote from uh roosevelt franklin roosevelt i, I uh -huh. want to read it sure. courage is not the absence of fear but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear so uh, whenever uh, I'm about to give up uh, uh -huh. or quit it, I always remember this quote. It's a nice, nice, nice yeah. quote from Roswell. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Nice ideas about nice mottos from both of you. Okay, that's all my questions for both of you. Uh, before ending our live sessions, would you like to add anything else? Esgi or Gökçen? Actually...
I really want to thank mm, you. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's start with you, Esgi, then first. Okay, let's start with you, Esgi, then Gyokchen. Oh. So sorry if I cut you out. I'm just saying thank you for inviting us. It was very mm -hmm. fun. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was a great <laughs> pleasure for us. What about you, Gyokchen? I really also appreciate that you invited us and it was a good experience to make a live session, being a part of this session and uh, being a part of this experience, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I really thank you. All right. Thank you very much for both of you. All right. <laughs> And that's all from uh, student talks. I, I was going to say teacher talks again, but you know, it's my mind <laughs> always going to teacher talks after 100 sessions. I always, I still try to use, you know, the used to it, this student talks. But anyway, uh, thank you. That's all from student talk session tonight. And Gök Chen and Ezgi were with us and we had a very fruitful session with them. Thank you very much for both of them for accepting my invitation. We learned lots of things from them and their ideas and suggestions and uh, the things that they said here were really precious. Thank you very much again. By the way, I just want to keep reminded that next week there won't be uh, a student talk because of Bayram holiday. And after the Bayram holiday, we will continue with the eight uh, of student talks. And until that time, take care of yourselves and wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. And as I said before, take care of yourselves. And from now on, happy Bibrams to all of you. And take care of yourselves. And until next time, peace, everybody. Bye-bye, Gökçen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.